This week on Just Neapolitan, we have Eddie and Floyd, and I'm your resident Red Wing simp, Brian. How you fellas doing today? I'm doing all right. Okay. Yeah. Better than Floyd. <laughs> Making a competition now about who's doing better? Mm, he's yeah. just being weird today. I don't know what's up with him. He didn't need the today. <laughs> wow. Wow. Those shots were real bullets. Ah, eh, they would have missed. Especially if Floyd was the bullet. But anyways, how are you? <laughs> uh, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Beautiful. I'm not looking forward to the fact that it's um, getting warmer again. Yeah. I was all for spending the rest of the summer with 60 and 70 degrees, and I'm like, oh, look, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's you not going to happen. Yeah, no. Can't get that lucky. So I just have a, a quick note. Um, apologies for no episode last week. Uh, shit happened. We had to take a week off. Yeah. Going to leave it there. Um, Yeah, so... Sorry, we're back on every week. We just needed a week. Yeah. Um, be like yeah. that. Be like that. You know. I, I should have been smart and just been like done a replay episode. But I didn't think of that until right this second. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we could have started my own spinoff called Quiet Corners. With Absolutely Quiet not. <laughs> you can start your own spinoff. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, thank you for the vote of confidence, Brian. but Floyd, why did you just immediately, absolutely not me, what, I'm sorry, what's up with you, why are you acting weird? Why do you have to be Dwayne Rock Johnson about everything, you don't need your own spinoff. I was just more thinking like, this is why we can't do improv, <laughs> like I'm a yes and Floyd's a no butt. <laughs> that works. <laughs> no, it's it's the antithesis to fucking improv. <laughs> yeah, but the... but shut your shit down. Here's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's also the fact that he's not funny. I mean, that's I'm that's hilarious. Those and you're are a shots hater. fired. So, uh. What games we've been playing? Um, I have been on. Wow, I feel like Mitch McConnell. Um, I've been on my Oculus <laughs> again. I've been on my Oculus again, but I haven't been playing Beat Saber. I've been playing this game called Bait, and I've literally just been fishing. That's how I'm getting my fishing kicks in. I've just been fishing, just time away, just enjoying myself. Nice. <laughs> I did a bit of fishing. Did you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, what was that? The Call of the Wild oh, fishing yeah. game? The Angler? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I did that for like 40 minutes. It was a thing. <laughs> you didn't also, like it? Uh, I mean, it was all right. Mm. I'm just like, I... I after 40 minutes, I was like, you know, this is a game that I think at most I'm going to play for an hour or two. And I was like, I'm just going to call it now. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was, it, but so it's got the multiplayer thing. And I'm like, if I could just get into a lobby, like with people I know, and we could just all fish and chat, I can yeah. totally see myself doing that. Yeah, that'd be fun. But like, I don't want to do it with fucking randos and I don't want to just do it solo. <laughs> Cause it's like, if I, Go fishing in real life. I go with friends, and ninety percent of the point is to just go hang out with your friends and be peaceful and just chat. Yeah, like I go fishing. I don't give a fuck if I catch anything. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna bait the hook. I'm gonna cast the line. If I get a bite, I get a bite. If I don't, I don't. Like the point of the that's not the point of the day for me. The point of the day for me is get out in nature and touch grass and just chat. You know, like I don't, I don't. I very rarely have fish to keep the fish. Yeah. I want all the smoke. No, oh, you're going to smoke all your fish? 
You know what? I would not mind a good smoked salmon. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, so I have also been playing, you know, Call of the Wild, the Angler. And unlike you who does enjoy the multiplayer aspect, I fucking love it. I'm a competitive bastard, and I didn't know what I was doing, so I felt like I had a freebie. Well, come to find out, there's not much competition in fishing online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um... Just a bunch of pixels swinging pixels, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, after finding out I couldn't drive my car into other people, I promptly uninstalled. And, you know, it was a good time. Stayed on for about an hour. So, I do agree with some sentiments you have. But, uh. You were like, oh, I can't cause maximum chaos. I'm over. Yep. Pretty much, because there was nothing to be gained by fishing. Oh my god, I got a silver carp that looks exactly like the last carp I just got. <laughs> Except the slightly bigger. Yay! But you know, pixels are pixels, so you know, I try not to judge. I just uninstall with the speed of God. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, on a secondary note, I've been playing some Starfield. Yeah. Mr. New Games over here. Mr. New Games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what? As to not give any spoilers to, you know, you two, because I know you'll be playing shortly in a few days. But, uh, it's looking like a good one. It's looking like a good one. So, I do have a, a question. Yes. Uh, because I have read a couple articles. I'm Strangely enough, I'm not as worried about the story in Starfield as <laughs> I am in uh, Boulder's Gate. Because uh-huh. I'm like, it's a Bethesda game. I kind of probably know what's going to happen eventually anyway. <laughs> um, but uh, so have you gotten to the point where you have the robot companion? Yes. Yeah? Yes. So did you manage to name yourself something that he actually calls you? Oh, yeah. Okay, so... You might have seen something that I just don't know about. That might be another addition to something. Because I do have a robot companion, but he has not called me anything but Commander. Ah, so you didn't you didn't name it that. No, um so that robot commander or robot commander <laughs> companion um actually has hold on, doing this little auto order. Gotta pull the uh article up. It's, uh, how many voice lines was it? Do, 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 do. Uh, oh, just hundreds. I don't have an exact number. So there's, uh, so Vasco, right? That's, that's yes. his name. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So there's a list of hundreds of recorded names that if you're named that, it will call you that by name. One of them that is recorded is Assface. <laughs> ah, you can See, call yourself Assface, and he will call you in a recorded dialogue line, Captain Assface. Hmm. See, I sh- I would have never known that because my name at the time of recording happens to be Big Lord Homie. Oh, well, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, so, let's see. You could do Orgasmo. Ah. Uh, Boob, Booby, and Boobies are all recorded. You know, there are a lot of things that this game has introduced to me. And, you know, from my time of watching people play things like Fallout and, you know, my own personal endeavors with Skyrim on a lot of levels, I can say there's one thing that I fucking hate more than any fucking thing about this fucking game. (laughs) Which I know that is. Yes, I would. I I I always want to hear anger. I have the urge, and it's not its not going to be a bad thing, this is like, I always have the urge, when building in these skill trees for, let's say, Bethesda games, to just level pure speech and cause hell, but it's not going to do me any good outside of those moments, and I hate that it's an option, I really hate that it's an option, because I love action, I want the chaos, but I want to, I want to build with the chaos, I just don't want to speak it. And then get shot in the forehead. I just... <laughs> it's just... I, I hate that they do that to me. And it's a part of the game where they're like, you can be a walking fucking diplomat if you want to. And I just... 
I want to be a deadly aristocrat one day. So I'm going over the list now. Mm -hmm. Sacagawea is one of them. <laughs> I will like, there is a Floyd. shitload of names on here. Yeah, I'll I'll put the list of this on the Discord since uh, many more of us will be playing this soon. Because I'm definitely going to use a name that the fucking that it, that's recorded. Oh yeah. yeah! Now that I know that, I'll, I'll go we'll see what I can do about that. Yeah. And uh, you know, without like I said, I don't want to talk about the game too much because there's certain aspects of it that you should just enjoy. Don't say right. anything. But uh, I will say. The space combat. I'm hoping, because this is the beginning, it's a little easier, and it, you know, as we scale with the game, I think that the combat will get harder, or I get to stick to the claims that I am an amazing fighter pilot under any condition in any <laughs> game I ever play. So I'm hoping to be proved wrong this time around. Because it seems like whenever I play a game where they have some type of aerial space combat, I am a force within itself. Even without knowing what the fuck I'm doing. Because this that 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 spacecraft thing is a is a is a hoo hoo. It's a it's a doozy. Like they're gonna be some really disappointed children who don't quite understand what the fuck is going on because they can't comprehend. But for the rest of us, get good. Ooh. Yeah. You dropped to get good on them motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's all I have to say for that fine work of Bethesda gaming right there. Uh -huh. uh, you know? I can't wait till the rest of the world gets to play along. And then it destroys my TikTok feed and then all of a sudden I learn all these things that I never meant to learn and it completely alters the way in which I'm playing the game. Just like uh you know that other game I was playing, Elden Ring. But that's a different rant. And that's why I stay off social media. <laughs> so I actually what? played a new game this week, too. And what's that? I played Sea of Stars. Ah. Which, if you are in any way, shape, or form into... I'm just going to call them 16-bit style RPGs because it draws from so many, like, classics and even newer ones that are, like, kind of done to be, like, the classic stuff. Um, and thus far, fantastic, fantastic game. I'm loving it. It's... Do -do 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 -do. Um, <laughs> I, I, every time I say it, it comes in my head. Fucking commercials, man. Um, okay, you know what? Let me start with the complaints. Let's let's start with the bad and we'll get to the good. Um, so if you guys ever played like the Mario RPG series or any of like the Paper Mario, uh -huh. yeah, and you know like when you're in battle, if you hit the button at a certain time, you block more damage or you can do extra damage. Mm hmm. Yeah, this has that system. I hate that system. Really, I've always hated that system. It's to me, it's quick time event combat, and with Mario RPG, because you're always lined up, you know, it's not nearly as bad. You get, you can, you figure out your timing fairly easily and it's not that big of a deal. So this one being in more like a 2.5 and where you're standing in combat is always different and where the enemies are is always different. So mm -hmm. like you can't get a true timing because sometimes they're further away from you. Sometimes they're closer to you. They're coming at you from different directions. And yeah. And so there's no option to like help with any of that or just put it so that it does it automatically because like I don't want to deal with that when I'm playing a, a turn based game. Mm -hmm. Like to me, I'm like, give me turn based combat with, you know, all the dice rolls behind the scenes and sometimes you crit and sometimes you do less or give me just full on, you know, uh, active combat where I have to actually do things. Right. Like, I don't I don't like this one because it's like half and half. I will say for some of the special moves, though, I like having that. Um, mm -hmm. Like my favorite skill is this Moonerang where I shoot it and then I have to hit the button to deflect it and it slowly gets faster and it hits all the enemies. And I have killed bosses by like getting it to like go like 
I, I think I just got an achievement for it 25 times in a row. Oh, my. Yeah. So And it just gets faster and faster to the point where I'm just, like, hitting the A button as quickly as I can because that's how fast it's going. Mm-hmm. And then it gets so fast that it, I can't do it anymore. Um, so I don't so much, like, I would prefer that as a gimmick for specials than to every single attack in the game. Uh, uh, but as I said, there's no option to kind of, like, make that. So, like, just do it automatically and just give me less actual damage or whatever, right? right. Which brings me to uh, accessibility options are locked be- behind in-game items. What you mean? Yeah. So, um, that thing I was talking about where just do it for me automatically, right? That would right. be an accessibility option because, like, some people that, you know, with that don't necessarily have the fine motor skills for whatever reason won't be able to do that to time it. Hmm. Well, you can buy an item in a game. They're called relics. And basically, the relics are there and they, like, quote, unquote, make the game easier. But some of the easier things they do are literal accessibility options. There's one that will do the, do it automatically, but you do 50% less damage. And I'm like, oh, perfect. Exactly what I fucking want, because I don't want to have to hit a button every time I attack after I attack. Right. Um, there's one that will... Sh- uh, a relic you have to buy that will give you a visual aid to let you know when you've hit the timing correctly. Hmm. <laughs> That's a menu option. <laughs> Like, that is, that's a menu option. I'm sorry. And now that I've gotten further in the game, now there's some relics that are like, oh, prices at the shops are lowered. So, like, okay, now I'm getting to the stuff that's actually, like, adjusting the difficulty of the game. Right. Like, the first six or seven were things that I'm like, those should be menu options. Um, It's just like, I, I don't... I hate games not having accessibility options. There's no fucking reason for it. But, Yeah. So I really like, though, that um, you get mana from attacking. So, like, you have a very small mana pool, and a lot of your skills will take up most of that. Mm-hmm. So you have to constantly be ch- choosing when to use your skill. And, you know, knowing that, like, okay, but then I'm going to have to be able to attack for two turns in a row to get that mana back. Right. And, and like, I like that because that kind of, like, there's a little more strategy to it. Uh, Game's beautiful. Soundtracks is amazing, uh, which are two things that I think I knew were going to happen before it even came out. Um, oh, there's fishing. And as we all know, fishing within a game is a sign of a good game. Yes, 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 yes. There's also cooking. Oh. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, yeah. So this one's kind of cool. The level bar is the whole party. So you don't have to mm. worry about people leveling um you know at different points right like yeah. I'm, at, I'm at a yeah yeah like i'm at a point in the game where you know i don't want to in case anyone wants to play it i mean it, it won't ruin anything the story is great but it's also pretty tropey like it where it wears its influences very much on its sleeve like you you can tell right um a lot of it's stuff that like you know what da, 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 but it's a fresh take on it it's really nice it's it's a it's like i said if you're a fan of those games it's definitely worth playing um, but yeah, so, so like I have a person in my party right now that's currently not in my party for a reason, but when the party levels up, that person still gets a level. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I don't have to worry about someone falling behind. Um, which I thought I, I think is really cool. And it does, uh, once again, uh, the super Mario RPG thing where you level up and, and all your, your stuff's going to go up, but then you get like four, like randomly selected things that you can also on top of that add extra to. So like, say you level and you're going to get plus four HP. But you're getting mm-hmm. that no matter what. You could also then pick the HP and get an extra eight HP on top of that for this level. Got it. You know, and you can do, like, magic defense, defense, magic damage, <laughs> regular attack, and mana points. Yeah, I think those are all... You know, so you can kind of, like, oh, man, I've been getting hit really hard. I need to put defense on or any... You know, so I that I enjoy. Um... Oh, yeah, so there's pirates that you mm. meet that are probably the best NPCs I've ever interacted with in any game ever. <laughs> mm. That's a claim right there. They are. They make fun of so many, like, RPG tropes. Um, they break the fourth wall 
and like got me to like laugh out loud a couple times because once again i'm a fan of this genre i'm a fan of like rpg games to begin with so like i totally get the jokes and they're all coming from a place like where you can tell like they're fans it's not like right someone who doesn't play talking shit like uh, and it's like listen we know it's stupid uh, i you know but it's like it's just it's how the games go so yeah see stars i think i'm like about eight hours into that nice I mean, it's, it's been a lot of fun. It's like one of those, like, I'll play for a couple of hours and I'll be like, cool. You know, get some stuff done. Um, I recently found out I own some Lego games. Oh, my. Yeah. Lego like, games like, are it's... usually good, though. No, I, yeah, I downloaded them because I was like, oh. Because I never finished them. I know the whole reason. I, I bought them because my, my girlfriend and I at the time, it was one of the games that she would play. Hmm. And then that whole relationship, you know, whatever. And so then they never got played. And then I gave my 360 away. And so never thought about them again. But they were in the store on sale. Um, but it just said owned underneath them. And I was like, oh, well, I'm going to get those. Right. Uh, so, yeah, played them for a little bit. They still mostly hold up. I mean, they weren't like that amazing to begin with. I think my summation of the Lego games, annoying but fun. Yeah. I, I definitely think I would prefer playing it with a second person as well. Yeah, but also the fucking... Sometimes they can be, like, clunky as hell. Which oh, I, yeah. I guess makes sense because they're Legos, but still. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, there were a couple times... Um, because Okay, so I have the Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. And I have all of them up to the fourth movie. So the first four movies. And then this one I think is funny. It's labeled as Star Wars The Complete Saga. Right. It's episode one through six. Um, But holy shit. Some of the platforming is like, would you please let me move the camera so I can fucking see what I'm doing in this (laughs) three-dimensional space? Yeah. Like, I I had a couple jumps that like, I I almost threw the controller. I was raging so hard, <laughs> and I think it's worse because I'm like, it's a fucking kids game, and oh, yeah. I hear your pain. It it was it was painful. I finished that level and I was like, we're done with Lego for the day. <laughs> yeah, I was really into the Lego Star Wars for a while. I don't know why, but it was just a good time. They're, they're just fun little games. They're good, like. They're they're definitely like one of those like bite sized games. Like yeah. I'll sit down, I'll play it for like an hour, hour and a half, I'll have a few cups of coffee, and then I'm like, okay, and now for something completely different. And um yeah, I just like just today started playing Fallout 4 again. Nice. Yeah, I, I realize why. Because I want to play Starfield. <laughs> okay. And I was like, this will tide me over for three days. Not but also, in. oh, go ahead. Sorry, I said cave in. Do it. No, I'm not going to. I told you that. <laughs> like maybe, maybe, maybe. If I was gonna cave, I would have caved on the first. Yeah. There's, there's no point now. Especially not for fucking thirty bucks. <laughs> thirty dollar fucking upgrade. Kiss my ass. <laughs> we all know premium up- upgrades are twenty bucks. You can't increase the price of my game and increase the price of my fucking <laughs> upgrade for some goddamn cosmetics and starting yeah. weapons. And also, I'm fairly certain a lot of the shit you get with that upgrade, you can find later in that game. Kiss my ass. But that being said, I'm very much looking forward to um, wasting my entire life on Starfield. Yeah, it's going to be so fun. <laughs> it's going to be so fun. I'm supposed to be looking for a new job. <laughs> <laughs> you could do both. I know I can. I won't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't going to point that fact out. <laughs> I mean, I <laughs> am trying to be more honest with myself these days. Mm. Hey, uh, but we'll be here for each other. Yeah, yeah. 
by which you mean we'll be in separate rooms in our own little world playing the game. Yeah. And when we happen yeah. to cross each other in the kitchen because we realize, oh my god, I haven't eaten in ten hours. <laughs> See, that's probably going to be the reality for you guys because of how you feel about it. It's really hard for me to put... It's it's so hard to explain. I've had it, and I it's not like I... Ha- I've been able to put it down several times because... It's so much for me to take in. For you, like Brian, who likes Fallout and shit like that, I can tell exactly how you're going to feel about it. For me, it's so much. Because mm. I try to play it the right way and not rush through it as I have a habit of doing things and I'll make myself hate it. So I'm trying to slow it down and enjoy it a little bit more. Because if I know life, it one day I'll get sick of it and never pick it up again. And I hate to that. I do that to myself so often. I'm trying not to do it on this <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to be so sidetracked. That's how I fucked Elden Ring up. I was just too into it in the beginning. I couldn't come back. Mm, Elden Ring. Yeah, I need to I beat that at Elden some point. Ring. Yeah, at Same. some point. I say that. Maybe like I say that DLC every time we out. bring up. Every time we yeah. bring up Elden Ring, that's my first. I need to beat that. <laughs> every time we bring up Elden Ring, I'm like, I need to get my computer working. Yeah. Hey, I'm a third of the way done with building the new computer. Nice. Mm. I'm, I'm going to call it about a third. I mean, really, I just got to plug a bunch of shit in. And then install the last couple things that are like plug and play stuff. So, yeah. Fun times. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> Especially because... You know what? I'm bringing this up. I wasn't going to bring it up. So the reason why I'm only a third of the way done is because getting old is a fucking trap. <laughs> yeah, it is. And I hurt my back building a PC. <laughs> <laughs> because I reached weirdly, and all of a sudden, something in my back just went pop, and here's a bunch of pain, and I had to like go fucking lay down, and it's been three days now, and it still hurts, because getting old is a fucking scam. Also inevitable, but, you know, whatever. Sorry this happened to you, my friend. That's fine. Life hates me. Life hates us all. It does. That's. I think that's what it's supposed to do. Yeah. It and this definitely extra is. happy edition of the podcast. Mahaha. <laughs> Mahala. <laughs> 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 My, my, <laughs> my, my, what a good time when that song came out. You, you know why I'm thinking about that? Why? Like three weeks ago, the dude who did that original just did a 2023 version. Oh, and yeah. I came across really? it randomly. And I was like, uh, you remember when the internet was like more young? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, like. 15-year-olds are cynical as shit the minute they get online. <laughs> I'm like, who hurt you? I mean, boomers, but they hurt us too, so. There's no innocence to this no more. I'm not sure there ever was. I think there was a falsity of inter- innocence. Yeah, we just wasn't connected enough. <laughs> yeah, to realize, oh, we're all going through this shit. Cool. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit. Right, yeah. Yeah. You guys ready for some news? Yes. Let's do it. Cool. Well, let me double check. Okay, I'm going to have to, I'm going to change up the order I had this in because I didn't expect this to kind of be a downer episode. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to, I want to end on like the one kind of goodish piece of news I have. Wow. Instead of having it in the middle, I was going to have a bad news sandwich. <laughs> we love those. Do we? No. <laughs> Eat the shit sandwich and tell me it tastes good. I refuse. Mm. Yeah. You can exactly. do it if you try. Um, so, we, we we are all aware of the SAG AFTRA and the Writers Guild strikes against um, the movie industry, right? Sure. Yes. SAG after May strike also against the video, the video game games. Industry. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So they basically have said that talks with major companies are at a standstill. A lot of the contracts expired November 22nd. 
Both sides agreed to give it another year to continue talking. Uh, and SAG is seeking to strike because negotiations are going nowhere. Uh, once again, what do they want? Wage increase and protection from AI. You know, the same fucking shit they want from the other industry. And billionaires are like, well, but no, we don't want to pay you. And we'd rather have an AI that we don't have to pay. Right. You know. Um, and then, so the last time that they uh, had a strike with the video game industry is 2016. It lasted 11 months. Be happy there's a bunch of good games coming out this year. <laughs> who knows when we get the next ones. Right. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> you know, all I got to say is huge, huge, huge happiness that I am a fan of indie games. Oh, yeah. Also true, yeah. I love a good early fuck me over drop. Let's do it. Oh, man. You know what? I, I, part of me is like, I want the strike. Uh, number one, because... I agree. You should be getting better wages. And I don't want AI to be doing the fucking acting in a game. Right. I don't. I just don't want it. I don't want it to be doing the writing. I don't want it to be doing the artwork. Because also, oh, rant time. It's not actually fucking AI. (laughs) They are glorified chat programs that compile information on the internet. They're not creating anything new. Right, And now you can say something like, well, obviously everything we do as humans is based on the past and things we've been, you know, influenced by. But it goes through our our own personal lens and our own life, and that's what makes it art. Like, just because you were inspired by something somebody wrote 10 years ago and you write something inspired by that, it's still a new piece of art. It's still new. When you're acting based on, oh, I watched these actors growing up and I like their method, you take that and internalize it, but it's still all your personal things. When you have a, a, a compiler program that we are going to quote unquote call it AI, it's fucking not, it's not self-aware, then it's not, there's no like, there's no person there, there's no emotion, there's nothing to filter it through. It's it's bland, it's pointless, fuck off. Right. <laughs> I think the best point for the, like, using those compilers are like, say if you're an artist and you're like, show me some examples of this to inspire yourself. That, I think, would be a good use for this. Rant over. <laughs> More like a mini rant. Yeah. yeah, that was definitely that was definitely a mini. I don't I don't have it in me to get angry about something that I'm like Yeah. Y'all should know better. <laughs> <laughs> they so, should uh, Yeah, but they don't. <laughs> but uh, Almighty Dollar. Uh-huh. So, uh, Cyberpunk 2077, you know, mm-hmm. um, Phantom Liberty, I don't know if that came out yet or if it's soon. Though, once I... again, that's on my PC, so I'm not paying attention to it that much. Right. Maybe. Um, so, CD Projekt Red has said that with the expansion, it's done with Cyberpunk. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Um... You know, and this, this comes on the heels of, in July, CD Projekt Red laid off 9% of its workforce. You know, the corporate speak being, to make the company more agile, which makes no sense. Mm-hmm. At all. Whatever. Um, and also, they're claiming that they're moving away from Red Engine, which is their proprietary um, engine that they use for their games. Right. And moving to Unreal 5. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense for new projects. That doesn't mean you can't still support... You have... It's all there. You could continue right. to build, but whatever. Um, me, I'm just personally happy that a large studio has given up on a game after not even delivering everything they said they would. Um, you know, because making big games on a new IP is, is hard. So obviously laying off people to cut costs is the right move. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. No Man's Sky just entered the chat. <laughs> Eight years later. Seven years of support from an indie studio. Free updates. Kiss my fucking ass. They haven't oh, did it, one it, paid DLC. Yes, yes, they have. Have they? Yeah, really? I'll the, buy it. Uh, Shut up and take my what money. What's it called? One sec. I just saw it the other day. Mm, one sec. Okay. So while you do that, um,. Now, this gets back onto the accessibility thing mm-hmm. um, and Starfield's lack of accessibility options. So, um, this Starfield? comes. Starfield? Uh, yeah. 
okay. I mean, it's basically just another in a long line of Bethesda doing a terrible job with accessibility options. <laughs> they just continue to do it. And I want to make sure it's clear who this is the blame is on. Bethesda does this all the time. They are terrible at adding accessibility options. Um, even things like, you know, contrast for subtitles, making sure things are easy, motion sickness stuff. Like, uh, a lot of times, controller remapping, they won't allow you to do. Like, they're they're one of the worst when it comes to accessibility options. Period. Yeah. End of discussion. Uh, I think probably one of the only worse than them would be FromSoft. <laughs> uh, I lied. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't remember a DLC. Um, but yeah, so once again, they fail, and I just want to make sure where the blame goes, because you know a bunch of Sony fanboys are going to try to blame Microsoft, where Microsoft has actually made accessibility a cornerstone of their business model, mm -hmm. and has gone out of their way, and oh, that's right, they had a, an accessibility controller program, like, seven years before Sony even decided to start working on theirs. <laughs> um, and I'm not going to take sides in the fanboy debate. I think we've mentioned this before. Obviously, we play Xbox. That's what we have. If I could afford all the consoles, I would. I would also prefer there's no such thing as exclusives, so I can just buy one console. Right. Um, but if I'm going to fanboy for anyone, it's PC. Every day, baby. Yeah. Every day. So I got no stake in that. I just want to just want to call them out. Because I I think it's bullshit. Yeah. Like it's, it's 2023. Let people play your games. Like why would you? I I also from a business standpoint don't understand why you would make it harder to sell your game. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's because it's not about making money. It's about cutting costs. <laughs> Always. Mm -hmm. That's what the shareholders want. Uh, hey, Vampire the Masquerade, Bloodlines 2, which is too long of a name. Has anyone, like, paid attention to this saga at all? No, I have not. Are you, do either of you know or fan of the original Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines? No. I do. No. No? Okay. So, this one's for you, Candle. Um, <laughs> so, originally announced in 2020, and it's been in just production hell forever, it is now being taken over and has been re rebuilt by a company called The Chinese Room. Hmm. And they say, with different gameplay mechanics and an RPG system. Do you Are you guys familiar with the developer of The Chinese Room? No. no. Okay. Do you know the game Dear, Dear Esther? Esther. Esther. Yes, T H E R. I don't know how to pronounce that name. <laughs> it's a stupid ass name. Or uh, how about Amnesia <laughs> Machine for Pigs? Yes. I've heard uh, everyone has gone to the Rapture. No. So what these all have in common is they're narrative driven, very story, basically walking simulator kind of games. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Amnesia is like horror, but it's Right, yeah. Yeah, but they that's the second Amnesia game and they got rid of like the inventory system and, and a lot of the mechanics to, you know, tell that more, like, story-driven narrative game. Um, they have a game coming out in 2024 that's a, an original IP that is a narrative-driven story-based game because that's what they do. And they're taking over an RPG. As we all know, companies that have no, no, no right or... No, nah, that's not the word I want, but whatever. Uh, to be doing this type Experience? of... Experience? Experience, thank you. That That's, you know, words are hard. Um, doing th this type of game, you know, obviously it's it, there's such a great track record when they move over. Uh, like, for example, a company that makes point-and-click focused games, then changing to do action stealth. And we all know how well Gollum worked out. Right. Or a uh, single-player story-driven RPG maker who decided to do a squad-based shooter. Anthem. Anthem was great, wasn't it? Oh, terrible. So uh, look forward to sometime next year because, oh, by the way, remember I said they're, uh, they got this game coming out in 2024? Right. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's their original IP, and I think it's like February. Yeah, so uh, fall 2024 is when Bloodlines 2 is coming out. Mm. Yeah, two big games like that in a year. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. 
So uh, sometime next year, we'll be talking about how the studio is closing down and all the layoffs they're going to be having for the terrible game they put out, right? Yes. Yep. So I'm calling it a year early. <laughs> um, yeah. Or, or hear me out. Mm-hmm. Devil's Advocate here. They put okay. out two really good games. I mean, listen. If I'm a betting man, <laughs> <laughs> well, bet on the former. Uh, I've been excited and waiting for Vampire the Masquerade for a long time, mm. so I'm hoping for the latter. Yeah. So I am not but, a betting man because I like long shots, so I'm taking the latter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just so my my big concern isn't so much they're taking the game over, it's that when they mention that they're reworking uh-huh. the, the, the mechanics and the RPG system. Right. I'm like, so you're making a story-driven adventure, like. And that's what it sounds like. Yeah, well, especially because so um, originally you were supposed to be like a fledgling, a new vampire, you know, so that obviously because in an RPG that's how it works. You have to start at level one, and you right. have to get stronger as the game goes. Now, your uh, your character is going to be an ancient vampire that's just woken up from like hundreds of years of sleep. Oh, so you're trying to get his strength back. No, 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 no. So in the uh, the 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 Vampire of the Masquerade world, when you wake up from hundred years, you're still just as strong as you were before. Hmm. You you have every so changing the main character that much, and also it, there is a, a quote in the article about you know so you won't have as much freedom over your character, but you'll be able to change certain things. And I'm like, yeah, so it's just gonna be a, it's gonna be a walking simulator in Vampire of the Masquerade is what it sounds like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know a lot of people really like those games, but that's what it is to me. Um, that's just the thought of it walking simulator. It's, that, it's, <laughs> just, you got my money right there. You got yeah, my just, fucking I money. <sighs> I can't get into them, and like, no hatred for anyone who likes them. I understand why. It's a very innovative way to tell a story, and it's more interactive. And if you can get into it, I would assume they're really good. But I can't. Because anytime I try to play one of these games, I'm like, so where's the game? <laughs> um, that's why, like, even, uh, what is it, Thomas is Alone, the one that's, like, mm-hmm. comedy. I've watched people play that. Because I'm like, I'm not going to fucking do that. <laughs> At all. I Listen, pretty sure I have ADHD, but uh, uh, until it's documented, fuck you. I like excitement. Diagnosed. Yeah, you know, you know words are hard. And <laughs> hey, look at Floyd. Got to be that guy. Words are hard and Borderlands 3 sucks, okay? That's right. There it go. I knew it was coming. I, I just... I was going to try to wait for... I was like, there's not going to be a good point. I just say it while I'm thinking about it. All right, and then for the funny people are stupid news. So, War Thunder had another classified document leak. What? Do you know the game War Thunder? Yeah. Yeah. Did you know that they constantly have classified documents that get leaked on their Reddit? (laughs) So people can win arguments? Like, so this time it was a 730-page manual for the Eurofighter Typhoon uh, aircraft, <laughs> this one was to, quote, help the devs to add it to the game. Oh. It was taken down within 15 minutes with a reminder from the mods, please do not post classified documents. <laughs> so, for wow. example, in 2021, classified documents about a tank, <laughs> you know, were, were, were shared to win an argument. And then it <laughs> happened again a few months later. Uh, then some documents about Chinese anti-tank rounds. Again, to win an argument. Um, earlier this year, the F-16 Fighting Falcon documents. And then there were more two days later. All to win online arguments. <laughs> this must have been some, some really, really intense arguments. Listen, words are hard and people are dumb. Yeah. Always. Yeah, so, I mean, it's fun when uh, 
people in the military who have access to these classified documents are also gamers. Thanks for making the rest of us look bad. I love it. I love everything about it. I I mean, chaos and stupidity. I think, and we are their lords. I think that was the foundation of why I wanted to do a podcast. <laughs> Sometimes it comes together like that, man. It 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 does. It does indeed. So, let's see. Well, we already know it's a big game coming out. It'll be a day after this podcast goes up. Starfield. I'm talking about Starfield. That's Tuesday? Uh, that's what it says here. I thought it came out. When is the 6th? No, it comes out Wednesday. Uh, this is saying the 5th, but you might be right. Hmm. I mean, it, whatever, it's coming out in a day or two. Th- does it truly matter at that point? Nope. We've waited this long. What's 24 more hours? Yeah. True. Oh, damn. You know what? This What's is waiting? my segue to Borderland 3 Sucks. Sorry, go ahead, Eddie. Oh, nothing. I was saying, what's, you know, there's no way. I, I'm ready for you guys to get here <laughs> to help me discover things that I skimmed over because. That's what you do. Don't worry. Soon, Captain Ass. I have a condition. Help you. <laughs> Is we'll the uh, only cure more cowbell? Yes. <laughs> more fucking cowbell. So you know how I said I didn't know how I was going to segue the Borderlands 3 sucks? Yeah. Do you know what came out on September 1st? Oh, wow. The Borderlands oh. collection. <laughs> nice. Pandora's box, which includes everything except, you know, the new Tiny Tina's game. Mm. Ah. Oh, man, two, two games coming out not. soon. I am ready, you know, me and the crew have been getting together, having our yearly conversations that amount to nothing because... All of the stuff is speculation until we actually get the game, but we do it anyways, because that's what makes it fun for us, you know? We're really going to get out there and do the things. We picked our positions. Everybody knows who's a starting player and who's not, and, you know? I can't wait to see who's going to be mad on the bench waiting for somebody to call them back because they want to play. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to be on a really far away bench. <laughs> Ooh, but also, in 2K-related news for anybody who cares, they have brought back... My favorite thing about playing 2K online against other people. They brought back the old rep system. So the way the rep used to work in 2K was you start out as Amateur 3. Mm-hmm. And as you play online. Yeah, Floyd, you remember. As you play online, your rank would go up from Amateur 3 to Amateur 2 to Amateur 1. And then to Superstar, All-Star, and then to Elite. You know, which basically shows your, your actual prowess in online play. It reminds me of the last the, time I played that game consistently. Yep. And so, uh, if you're like me and, you know, I'm not playing a game where we count stats, not for my stats not to matter, you know. So, I need that number to shine. In the last four versions of 2K, they have not done the stat system that way. They've done it on a personal screen that comes like 10 minutes after the game that causes you to lag. It's been a lot of real fugazi shit going on with 2K in these last couple years. But they brought the old system back, and I look forward to this year's rep grind. And I do not usually say that. So the game I'm looking forward to? I mean, besides Starfield. But this is going to be a more social game. This is one we all have to play. Which includes Maggie. Super Bomberman R2, September 12th. Ooh. I heard I... nothing about that until just now. Yeah? I don't I even see how that squeaked that. past my radar. I don't, I don't either. I've heard of, I heard about it months ago, and I've been, mm. just been keeping an eye out. Yeah, and it's coming to everything. So it's not like doing that Switch exclusive bullshit. Right. Which I think they with the last uh, Super Bomberman, they stopped doing that. Yeah. Man, it just makes more sense. Everything. Yeah, it does. Can someone explain that to Sony? Yeah. 
Now, Although for them, it it does make sense for them to do exclusives because they sell more consoles that way. True. Well, fellas, got anything else this week? No, no actually, all my most important things. Yeah, it was a really light week for me. So. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, it was for playing games. It was pretty light for me too. I just I I definitely had that week where I'd play a game for like two hours and be like bored now. Mm-hmm. And even when it was a good game, it's not like I was playing like crap games. I was playing good games, and I'm just like I'm done with this. I've been doing a lot of um, watching, rewatching old YouTube stuff. Yeah. Because nobody's doing any fucking new content right now because it's the summer. And apparently, everyone took summer off this year. I don't know. Or at least the people that I pay attention to. Um, and I actually watched a couple movies, which is something I don't ever do. True. Oh, I watched, uh, because t- now we're, whatever. Uh, I watched <laughs> Ford versus Ferrari. Oh. It was Did really good. Did you enjoy good. that one? Uh, yeah, it was really good. Hmm, I had that on my list for a while now. But did you uh, watch John Wicks, though? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I still haven't. Come on, Brian, I want to talk to you about how absurdly good these movies are, but emphasis on the absurd. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no, they're... I mean, John Wick, it's basically a superhero movie. Oh, speaking of John Wick, right? Did you know mm-hmm. that originally the movie was supposed to be called Scorn, right? But mm-hmm. Keanu Reeves in interviews just kept calling it John Wick. So the studio was like, ah, fuck it, it's John Wick now. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> that... That's good because Scorn is a stupid ass name. Yeah. <laughs> like I never would have been interested in watching that movie. Because it sounds like a, it sounds like a taken ripoff. Mm. Scorn. <laughs> Scorn. The boy oh, whose dog died. I think they're doing another Expendables. They are. Yeah. I believe they just announced that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, it better be in post-production already, or we ain't seeing it for a fucking while. True. Robert Downey Jr. is going to play everybody for us. It's okay. <laughs> okay, but then he'd be out of the guild. He's a rebel. If you... Yeah, no. He'd... <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I'm going to... No. I mean... <laughs> That'd be a really good way to announce your retirement. <laughs> yeah, because that as soon as that new contract is done, that's exactly what you just did. <laughs> and especially if uh, was like he couldn't even do video games. Mm-hmm. You know what though? It, he he could he could start doing YouTube then. He could, and we could see how interested he is without a script. Uh, actually, he is kind of. I, I think he I, is. He has uh, this. He that. has this show where um, it's it's basically a car show, but it's really good, and I like it. Hmm. The first episode was him like um, going through the process of like him and like this uh, fucking company, this shop. I I don't know why I say company. This shop like uh, retrofitting like his old Bronco, but making it, like, fully electric. And it's really cool. I thought it was oh, wow. interesting as hell. Hmm. I have been really into car show content lately. Nice. Well, I found, a like, a new podcast and, and then YouTube channel, so. <laughs> They've got years of content, so I've just been oh, like, yeah. to me, it's all new. Uh, that's what oh, I that love. Sounds like a good Just time. finding oh, yeah. something good with a good, healthy chunk of content, and I'm like, yes. <laughs> so that's how I felt about Star Talk. <laughs> funny story about this, like the the whole uh, YouTube and podcast channel I'm watching, and this it's funny. This brings it back to video games. I found out about them because in an update with Forza Horizon, they added a story that had the guys from this YouTube channel, like, on the game. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, they're kind of funny, but it's, like, in that stilted whatever way. Right. And then, you know, 
because listen, Big Brother's always watching. I literally load up YouTube and boom, there it is on my home feed, recommended their one of their videos. And I was just <laughs> like so I just went, Okay, fuck it. And I clicked on it and I went, Oh, I really like these guys. And I nice. just kept fucking watching. And then at some point they mentioned they have a podcast and I was like, Cool, I love podcasts. I love to throw a podcast on and play video games. So I'm like, boom, podcast, and then find out, oh, they have a second podcast. Boom, let's add that one in. Yeah. <laughs> so funniest, th- that is the most fucking random way I think I've ever gotten into <laughs> a content creator. Yeah. True. Shout out Donut Media. There, you know, I don't know why I'm not saying their name. There's no reason not to. Right. Uh, so what are you gatekeeping for, Brian? You're right. I'm, my bad, because obviously I know him, and you know, <laughs> I want to show up at the after party. You know, Wink Wink Nation. If anybody watches, listens to their podcast, they'll get it. And since eight, the eight of you that listen to this don't, <laughs> <laughs> that one's just for me, baby. Nice. Ah. Well, that was. I think that's it for this week. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, thank you for joining me as always. It's always good to talk with you, including like the forty-minute talk before we were like, "Ah, uh, we're supposed to record a podcast." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but all right, we love y'all. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>